uh, individual fight reviews after uh, fight night shows. I will chop up those and post them. But we've got uh, no post show. We'll be covering that on next Tuesday's MMA podcast. You have Ariana Carnalasi, a plus 150. Talia Santos, a minus 170. I don't think that fight's happening, though. I think that fight got pulled. Best fight odds needs to update it. Alex Da Silva, a minus 265. Uh, Rodrigo Vargas, a plus 225. You have Alexi Kachinko, a minus 155. Gilbert Burns, a plus 135. Chris Gutierrez, plus 120. Geraldo De Freitas, a minus 140. Rulian Paiva and Rogerio Bontorin, just even odds, at minus 110. Then you have Surreal Gain, a minus 430, a giant favorite. Rafael Pessoa, a plus 345. Bobby Moffitt, a plus 125. Enrique Barzola, a minus 145. We then uh, get into Oscar Picota, plus 180. Rodolfo Vieira, a minus 220. Humberto Bandene, a plus 110. Luis Garagori, a minus 130. Pollyanna Viana, minus 115. Veronica Macedo, minus 105. That was about 10, 11 fights where nobody knows who the hell these people are. You might know Pollyanna Viana. You might know Gilbert Burns. That's about it, Joseph. Yeah, I I mean, I'm surprised Gilbert Burns is plus 135. You, you better put that in here. I got five on it. Yeah, I'm bringing uh, that back. I keep forgetting it. Yeah, no, that, that Gilbert Burns at plus 135. Uh, take Neffman away from Konchenko. Yeah, you, you can give me Gilbert Burns because he can turn a fight any way he wants. Strikes, with obviously, with submissions. Uh, and he's a tank. So uh, you know, I'm interested in seeing that. But again, it is... It's perhaps a um, you know uh, a heavy card for the for those that are that are watching live in Uruguay sort of thing. But it, I, I got into a really heated debate uh, with Frank Trigg and um, uh, Shingo over in Ryzen about the thoughts that you and I have exposed here on this podcast about my thoughts on what the UFC needs to do. Uh, and I know it's not a rising show, but what you know, MMA or UFC you to, need to do in general uh, to improve their product and not have shows like this. Uh, clearly, I'm out to lunch because they, it got really heated at that, at that breakfast table. But uh, other than that, this is a show here. I mean, you went through, what, nine fights there? Yeah, a ton. A ton. And it's like, who? Meanwhile, you have a fight. I never thought that... Minus 150, Tisha Torres, who has lost three fights in a row against Marina Rodriguez, a plus 130. That's a fight I'm really interested in. Uh, Marina came off of last year's Contender Series, had that draw with Randa Marcos, uh, had a couple fights pulled. She couldn't get in there with Alexa Grasso. They both got hurt earlier this year. But she did beat Jessica Aguilar. If she beats Tisha Torres... That's impressive. That's a fight worth worth looking at. But for Tisha Torres, if you lose three fights in a row, even if it's to Andraj, Yen Jacek, and Wiley Zong, who's competing for the title, you, you don't want to lose four fights in a row, Joe. That, that looks bad, coming from the woman who a lot of people thought was going to be the person who dominated this division for years, if not a decade to come at one point. I remember in 2013, ahead of Tough, I was like, man, this woman has just dominated on the, the amateur circuit. She stepped in and beat Paige Van Zant, Rose Namajunas, and Felice Herrig back to back to back. And those wins aged really well. It's just not been there for her. Outside of when she got to the Andrage fight, she's never been able to put that back together. Will she be able to do it against Marina Rodriguez, who has thus far never been beaten? Look at Yeah, it's, it's tough to say because if you look at the four losses on Tisha Torres's resume, they're the top four women or mm-hmm. three of the top four women in the sport uh, with one of them, the fourth competing for a title. So, and she went the distance with every single one of them. None of them finished her, right? Yeah. So it, it's safe to say Tisha Torres is, you know, tough as nails. She can't really be finished because the best in the sport haven't been able to finish her. Uh, she just, She's she's stuck in that sort of no woman's land there, right? Like trying to get to a certain level but can't and then does good when she fights someone in the lower echelon and then gets to the top and it's like, oh, I just can't get there, right? So uh, I'm still picking Tisha or uh, I'm picking Taurus in this fight. 
the prop bet for the fight goes to decision a minus three fifty. Yeah, it's Tisha Torres. It. Come on. Yeah. yeah. I am rather excited for Volkan Ozdemir against Eler Latifi. This fight. Finally. God, they were tried. They tried to put it together in June, and Latifi had a back injury. They tried to put it together um, for this past weekend, and visa issues happened. Finally, it's happening. But Ozdemir has not won a fight since getting to the mountaintop, Joe. Not only that, he's been rebooked and pulled. And like Ozdemir couldn't leave the U.S. at one point, and then it got rebooked, and both fighters got hurt before the Gustafson fight. He does not have a win in over two years since Jimmy Manawa. And since then, people have figured him out. Not only is he getting out of the first round, people are dragging him into deep waters and drowning him. Quite frankly, that's something that I think that Elor Latifi is capable of doing, Joe. And that's why these betting odds are Ozdemir minus 145, Elor Latifi plus 125. These are right where I think they should be. Elor Latifi has met far different success than, than Ozdemir, uh, at least when he gets in the cage, because let's be honest, the guy has been hurt a lot. He got pulled from the OSP fight originally, got pulled from the Glover fight originally, and then all this. Four or five fights canceled in recent years, and he's not fought that regularly. How does all this play into Ozdemir versus Latifi, one of the more interesting fights on this show? Well, Ozdemir, you know, cannot lose. No bueno, Vulcan. No bueno. You must win. Latifi can afford to lose uh, if there's a loss to be handed out. So uh, I I like the odds where they're at at minus 145. I am going to lean towards Vulcan Ozdemir uh, emerging victorious in this fight only because I think he's, you know, that reach advantage. I know a lot of guys have reach on either Latifi in this division because he's a short, stocky fighter. But uh, Ozdemir's back is against the wall, man. And that's a dangerous scenario. As long as he doesn't fight safe, uh, I think he's going to put the the pressure on Latifi until he eventually lands something that uh, ends up being a finisher. I'm with you. Uh, You also have Vicente Luque, who is just on a roll, man. Won five in a row. Uh, He's won nine out of ten, which is crazy to think. His one loss throughout there is Leon Edwards taking on Mike Perry, who is also somewhat on a roll. He's won three, or actually he's won two out of three. Uh, the third fight I'm looking at, he actually won a grappling match last month. Uh, but he beat Alex Oliveira. He's beat Paul Felder. Paul Felder, you know, was over oversized there, or overmatched in, in size. But you look at Vicente Luque, a minus 230. Perry, a plus 190. I like where those odds are as well. Vicente Luque is very good, and I think that Mike Perry is okay and I think that's really going to shine through as this fight goes on and on and the thing is Joe Luque can be anywhere and he doesn't waste his time doing it because if he does waste his time doing it that's when he loses that's when he lost to Mike Graves that's when he lost to Leon Edwards when those fights went past the second round the only time that he, he won a fight after it went to the second round or after it went to the third round was when he finished off Brian Barbarino with seconds to spare earlier this year. Who do you think takes this one? Oh, Luque. Yeah. Gente Luque is just going to... I'm not saying he's going to steamroll Mike Perry, but if this thing makes it 10 minutes, I will be surprised. Yeah. So uh, that's going to be... like I, I would definitely rock with a Luque by finish prop bet but i don't see one available so no it just says fight goes or doesn't go to the decision yeah and that doesn't go to the decision is a minus 265 so what the hell i'll tell you who i got five one liz carmouche a plus 800 (laughs) Woo! valentina shevchenko a minus 1250 and perhaps so valentina shevchenko easily the greatest flyweight women's fighter to ever do it not like there's a giant sample size but come on you know what the deal is here you know what's up. <laughs> she is just the best. Now, here's the thing. Liz Carmouche beat her nine years ago. But a lot can change in nine years, Joe. <laughs> a yeah, whole like, lot. Like becoming can, a champion. Like yeah. becoming a champion and being in there with some of the greats. But uh, so is Carmouche. Carmouche was real close to beating Ronda Rousey. She went to the scorecards with Misha Tate. She's been... At 135, or uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure at 135 in there against Caitlin Chikagian and beat her. 
She's been in there with some good fighters. Has she been in there with anybody near Valentina Shevchenko's level? Andrade, and she beat her six years ago, but that was a long time ago, too. Karmouche was 26 when she beat Shevchenko. Karmouche yeah. is now 35. Yeah, man. How, how, how does this unfold for you? I think Shevchenko wins this, but damn, I'm excited for this one. Oh, definitely excited. Yeah, I think Karmouche is going to bring the pain to her and, and not going to go away uh, easily. But I think Shevchenko is just going to shine here in terms of her footwork, uh, her skill set, uh, just the way she unloads with her striking and her just her precision until she gets the opportunity uh, to, to really put a hurting on somebody. Look at what she did to Jessica I, right? Like, uh, that was a scary, scary scenario. I'm not saying it's going to happen to Liz Carmouche, but uh, Shevchenko needs just one opening, and she sets it up. And she sets it up beautifully. So uh, it could get ugly for Carmouche. I do, I do think Carmouche is going to do whatever she can to bully the champion, bully her, control her, take her down to the mat, not give her the opportunity to strike. Uh, but I just think Shevchenko's you know, ground game and footwork is, is – or sorry – uh, footwork and takedown defense might be a little too much uh, for Carmouche. I mean, it's MMA and it can happen, right? But, yeah, I'm leaning towards uh, the champ in this fight here. I'm with you there. I, I would put five on Carmouche, too. I'll go ahead and do my I got five on it picks. Got to go Carmouche plus 800 just in case because you never know. Off, also, one of the bigger lines on this show is Rafael Pessoa. Do I think he's going to win? No, I definitely, definitely don't. But... um also, I'm going to go with uh, Eler Latifi at plus 125. Not only that, the plus 145 that it goes to a decision. But, Joe, wow. what do you got going on this week? Sable, man. When do you come to Toronto? I will be there uh, 24 hours from now, 22 hours from now, actually. All right. I believe there is a baseball game uh, on Friday. Friday night. Yeah, I got to miss Ring of Honor Summer Supercard for it, but getting lots of work done. There's just so much going on, Joe. I'm going to try and attend uh, Friday nice. night. I have a big gathering during the day. I've got a coach uh, on Friday night, so if my, oh. one of my assistant coaches can step in, great. I will see you uh, on Friday night. If not, my bald head will not be in attendance and Jimmy <laughs> Mann will be yelling at me. Guys, thank you all so much. Reminder, subscribe, youtube.com slash Fightful MMA Boxing, where this will go up later, as well as clips from the show. Leave us a thumbs up. That stuff really, really helps us. And even if you don't listen on YouTube, please head over to our iTunes page. Leave a nice five-star review. That helps people on iTunes find us. Uh, because most of our audience comes from YouTube, it, it really goes a long way. Thank you guys so much. Until next time, we're out.